I believe everything comes around in a spiral, right? It's never I've dealt with the issue and I'll never have the issue again. That's just not true. I think we keep coming around to issues that form us in some ways all our lives. And I think for me, coming up against that, are you fundamentally an artist? Are you a creative? Is going to keep happening because for a long time I was told that, that my role was very specific and it was not a creative one. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. On the show, I interview peak performing world changers in the creative, social impact, and earth conservation spaces. If you like what you hear on this episode, you're going to want to check out the bonus mini episode you can access if you become a member of my coffee club. If you do, you'll get access to bonus episodes, new art, new writing, and other fun benefits at buymeacoffee.com slash Isolde T. See the show notes for more details. And now let's get on with the show. Hey there, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. So honored and happy that you've taken the time to be here, not just with me, but with us. Today is an Artist's Way episode, but it's a little different today. So Alan and Sergio and Megan and I were talking and we realized we're sort of pushing ahead. Dun, da, da. We're moving, moving, moving. And not everybody has uh, necessarily the time. Heck, even we don't have the time to just push in every week, every week, every week. So we decided that this week is going to be a little bit of a break. If you're following along with us and you want to catch up, because you've gotten a week behind or you haven't done some of the exercises or tasks or something like that, this is a week to do that. We're going to be back next week looking at how to recover a sense of self-protection. But for this week, we decided that we're going to actually reflect a little bit on how far we've come, on where we started, what we've gone through, and where we are right now in the middle, right? We're between weeks nine and 10 of this entire process. And I wanted to sort of get this notion out about where are we? What has happened? And so Alan and Sergio and Megan graciously agreed to take a break from the actual tasks and exercises, even though, just so you know, Megan is hosting and she was prepared. It's due to me going, "Ah, I'd love to do a little reflection thing that we are taking this break. So Megan was ready. I was not. And so let's let's go ahead and chat about this. I want to welcome Alan Fessenden, Sergio Giovanni, and Megan Vasilis to the show. Hi, y'all. Welcome. Hi, Zolda. Thank, Thank you, you again for having me. <laughs> for having I me. I love it. So so yeah, uh, I wanted to take a break and I and I want to thank you all for for indulging me on this because it is something it's an it's an intense process. There are lots of things that have happened, lots of things that have gone on, and I wanted to take a moment and sort of pause and reflect on where we started versus where we are versus where we envision ourselves going. So I want to thank you for indulging me in this and joining me. But before we go do that, I'd like to do a little check-in just to see how you are, what's going on. And and if you're listening to this, do a check in yourself too. sort of see if you can figure out for yourself where you are right now. What's going on with you right now? I, I can start. In fact, let me go ahead and start. I am highly caffeinated right now. So you might notice I'm speaking even a little faster than I usually do. So I, I, I woke up and I made my my morning uh oat milk latte and then turned right around and made a second one. So <laughs> I'm very highly caffeinated. And uh, I'm yesterday was my my celebration with my husband of 30 years being together. So we like to say that we started dating. Thank you. We like to say that we started dating when we were babies, but that's not true. I was in my 20s. We were in our 20s. And, uh, and spending that much time with someone across your life is a really bizarre and uh, growing thing, right? This is this is something that I've been thinking a lot about is that I've changed an incredible amount since we started dating. And I spent part of the morning today during my meditation really giving that some thought. In addition, of course, I have just started down the road of Creative Earthlings, which you're going to hear a lot more about in a little bit. And I also wanted to say that, that you can now join the membership for for this show and everything else that's going on with Creative Earthlings to learn more about the podcast, to learn more about the art that I'm doing. Uh, and you can go to buymeacoffee.com 
slash Isolde T to get access to super cool bonus material that no one else will ever see, like bonus episodes, little bonus mini episodes from all of the interviews that I do. So I'm super excited about that. So I can bring you even more stuff to listen to and learn with and learn from. And that's my check-in. Uh, Alan, how about you? Want to check in? Oh, sure. Absolutely. It's all the amazing stuff you got going on. I'm very excited to hear more of it, obviously. Um, for me, um, I am. <laughs> I have a lot of sort of ideas rumbling around, and uh, it looks like I'm going to hopefully start a podcast with my sister where we interview uh, cousins and talk about family lore, I guess, is the idea there. So That's awesome. <laughs> excited and nervous to get that going and um i am um, you know i got to a good point in my script where i need my uh fellow co-writer to write um to check check in with me and see where we're at but i feel very close to having that at a good spot so that's exciting for me and i'm i'm hoping to get a like a little reading or a little group together and read some of that and sort of see how it sounds off the page and uh that's exciting and then <laughs> at the same time uh and i talked a little bit with about this with you guys earlier in in our uh, writers meeting but um i am feeling very also now that i said those two things i'm kind of excited but i go back and forth in this zone of being like excited and worn out and feeling like what's the point of all this <laughs> am i really doing anything uh, and I think it's just this weird fog that you live in when you're sort of like excavating and digging and you're sort of like, it feels like you're just taking everything <laughs> out and making a mess around you. Maybe mm. know, that's like a extreme version, but I'm sort of just like digging a hole or like thinking of uh, um, the woman from Labyrinth, like, what about this? You got to deal with this. And what about <laughs> this? Don't you want to hang out with this? And I was like, ooh. So now it's just like everything's everywhere and you're like, oh, how, uh, I just want to crawl back into the hole and forget about it. But um, that is a, a, a flux. So I don't always feel that way a lot of times. And right now speaking and just sort of airing that out, I actually feel way better um, than I did like two seconds ago. So that's that's helpful. <laughs> uh, and life comes at you fast. And this uh, this um, process is, is a real, real fun uh, wave to be on. Um, Sergio, you want to do a little check-in? Sure. Uh, I'm glad you're feeling better. Just talking about that. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. A little bit. That's great. Uh, artist way. This is some, some process. Thing, huh? um, for me, a quick check-in. It's been, uh, my week is still busy. Uh, still helping out my family a lot, getting ready for some visitors, uh, family coming in, and a lot of birthday uh, festivities that we have going on next week. So I'm looking forward to that. On the creative front, I did start writing a new short story. Uh, it came from an idea that spawned from my morning pages, which I think that I started to talk about a little bit on our last episode. And yes, yeah, so I started writing that. That's exciting. And yeah. also, uh, thank you. Um, and yeah, there's some other ideas um, that I have uh, gestating as well. Awesome. I'm looking forward to pursuing those. Also, um, the Multiverse Odyssey, we've been working on a, a certain kind of video for our YouTube channel for a while now. Uh, we've just been needing to shoot the last segment for it, which we should be doing really soon, um, and then editing. So I'm excited for that. So hopefully in another week or so, we'll have this kind of cool experimental um, video. Um, out on on, uh, on YouTube, and yeah, I'll definitely talk about that more when we upload that. But uh, yeah, that's just a quick check in on my end. Awesome. Megan, how about you? Oh, I just want to say real quickly, uh, let me remind you before, Megan, you go, sorry, that, uh, for example, the link to the Multiverse Odyssey YouTube channel is in the show notes. So if you want to know what all we're working on right now, the links to the various sites are going to be in the show notes. Sorry about that. Megan, go for it. Yeah, so for me, this has been kind of a challenging week. I've been struggling a little bit with my output just because of some life changes I'm dealing with at this time also. But I think what I've come down to um, with the help of these guys is that I 
can sort of maintain the same goals, but I need to rethink a little bit how I'm going to achieve them just because the situation has changed and how I was working before is, has, has changed a little bit. So I'm going to spend some time thinking about that this week. And yeah, for me, I'm still working on my novel. I'm still working on page poems and working on figuring out how I'm going to grow that into kind of a larger brand. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm actually excited about all of these all of these projects moving forward because I, I feel a lot of potential in what I'm working on now, which I think is part of what the artist way has helped me with, gaining clarity on what I actually want to achieve. And even if the means to getting there has to change, the end goal doesn't necessarily have to. So um, how about you, uh, Isolde? Ah, well, thank you so much, Megan. First of all, you, uh, your site also, Page Poems, is also in the show notes. So you can find that if you want to know more about that really cool, exciting project. You can also follow us all on Instagram there. Uh, and I, uh, for me, I, I think I've, I've uh, sort of checked in a little bit, but I do want to say that there are a couple things that I didn't talk about. Uh, so I've decided to take on a pen name if you will, a gnome de plume. And what that is, is Natasha Tyler is going to be the author of Die by the Sword, which is the first book in the Cassie Belmont Tarot Reader Mystery Series. And the reason I did that is because I've been doing a lot of research on this, and they say that you should not try and do multiple genres under one name unless you're super mm. famous uh, and, and can get away with that. So I decided Natasha Tyler... Uh, the the name the the last name Tyler is my air name from when I was a radio DJ I was Andrea Tyler all rock all the time and then when I thought about the name of who who the name should reflect really I wanted it to be me being born in Moldova being born in a Russian speaking country even though Azolda is not a Russian name I I and I'm not Russian. I, I decided to choose a very Russian sounding name or Moldovan sounding name. So that's how Natasha Tyler came to be. And the thing about it is, is that the the process right now this week has been me figuring out that my friend Miranda Roldan, who is the sort of the model for Cassie, if you will, she and I have talked about all the amazing projects we're going to do in the lead up to the book's release, as well as the lead up to the release of my Learn How to Read tarot class that's going to be coming out hopefully in May and the book is probably going to be out in June so there's a lot of stuff going on with all of a sudden my cover designer has my ideas for the cover she's going to get to work on that I have Miranda's headshot that's going to be part of the cover and I'm trying to get all that together so there's a lot of stuff that in 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 writing in creating it's not just about writing in fact writing is only a tiny part of all the stuff you have to do to release a work and I'm, I'm having written the book, I am now in that part of it. And then Creative Earthlings is my latest and greatest thing. It is going to eventually be a nonprofit, a 501c3. But uh, one of the things that's happened to me throughout this process of The Artist's Way, this is the third time I've done it, the first time uh, I, inspiration struck and I wrote the songs for my first album called Sound the Deep Waters. And I wrote the songs and then eventually went through and recorded them all and released the, the actual album in 2003. The second time I did the book was in 2004, and that was the catalyst to me writing my first book, which was Life Elements, Transform Your Life with Earth, Air, Fire, and Water, which looks at the ancient alchemical elements and how we can use their characteristics and attributes to self-actualize, to become fully rounded human beings. And so this third time going through the book, I've kind of been doing this, uh, where's the inspiration? I'm waiting for the inspiration. And this week it struck and that was Creative Earthlings. And that, that 501c3 is going to be that sort of umbrella group that's going to hold also Creative Earthlings Publishing. It's going to hold this, the, it sits at the crossroads of art, science, and advocacy. And so the work that I'm going to be doing and am doing with schools is going to be under that umbrella. The Creative Earthlings podcast is out and available, just the first little tiny episode, but that's going to become a weekly show itself. So there's so much like that that has been percolating for so long that I did not get clarity on that going through the artist's way this time gave me clarity on. And that all happened this week, so it's just been... I feel a little inundated and a little saturated, but I feel really good. But at the same time, have you ever noticed, 
y'all, when when things start really going your way, you start going uh, either that you're waiting for the other shoe to drop or that you start feeling overwhelmed with the fact that things are going well. I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but that's kind of where I am right now. I'm like, is it too much? Can Have I bitten off way more than I can chew? Or, you know, can I get peaceful about this and sort of get into that space of responding, not reacting? And then my response will be more measured because I will be calmer. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Anybody? What? Well, I- I mostly like to speak in surf metaphors <laughs> since I've done very little surfing. Of course. But it sounds like that moment where you catch a wave and, and you're just kind of like, how long is this going to go? How long can I hold on? And am I going to bail out of it or am I just going <laughs> to ride it till it ends and have a nice little break at the end? <laughs> yeah. Or will I be able to move on to a next wave after a next wave after a next wave, which is, I guess, something <laughs> good surfers can do. And so, yeah, you kind of like surf those waves, but it definitely feels like I've definitely recognized that feeling of like, okay, all right, what's happening here? Lots going on. Feels like I'm, uh, you know, like you're being thrust up in a rocket, like a well, jetpack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> how do, do I am I gonna land head first, or do I? How does this thing go? Yeah. Um, but I guess you probably practice that stuff beforehand. But oh. anyway, that's my. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, you do, but you it's like, like skydiving, me. you know, when you're when you're going skydiving and you go, mm. I have no control for the next 30 seconds. I have no <laughs> control over my life, over my death, nothing. And it's it's both freeing and terrifying and exhilarating all at the same time. Uh, Sergio or Megan, does either one of you have any thoughts on this? Uh, yeah, that reminds me of that feeling of when, for me, it's like, it's just too good to be true kind of feeling. Mm. Uh, but also I like... Uh, I like the surf and rocket ship metaphors. <laughs> I love it. Megan? Yeah, I, I also really enjoy that metaphor and just the, the feeling of everything coming to culmination, even if you're not exactly sure how it's all going to come together. I thought that was it was really nice how you put that. Awesome. Thank you. So so let's let's dig in a little bit while we're taking this break, while we're going, you know. Let's take a week and chill and reflect and and sit with what we've done so far, what we've learned so far. Let let me ask you that question. Uh, what have you learned, Sergio? How about you going first on this one? What have you learned through this process so far? Sure, uh, I feel like I've learned a lot. I feel like I'm still learning, but I think right now, off the top, I will not. I want to share that I've learned to be more accepting of who I am my talent, efforts, and, and just what I have to offer overall. And I think I'm continuing to learn to be more grateful for all of the above. Megan, how about you? Yeah, I've, I've definitely learned not to sell myself short, you know, that I don't necessarily need to make my goal smaller, but I do need to think through how I'm getting there. And the how I might be not not serving the process or serving myself in the way I was kind of going about it before with this just um, without really taking the time to take care of myself. I think that's the biggest thing I've learned from the artist way so far, how important that process of self-care is to um, having a generative um, bank of creativity to draw through. Mm. How about you? How about you, Alan? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think that drawing on that generosity is going to that self-care is very important. I love that you mentioned that. Um, Megan, I, um, what have I learned? I, I had some thoughts and they immediately, as soon as I come to me, it's like, what was I? Um, but I learned that um, I need to stay curious and I need to um, break things down into smaller pieces and not think about the biggest process, the biggest part of it in the beginning. Like as older, you were talking about like, oh, this part of this writing process, it's not just writing. And I think like, great, you're at that point where you got to think about that. But um, sometimes it's not help, helpful to think about all the, all the stuff that you also have to do in addition to writing mm. once you write it. But um, so really sort of like thinking in those baby steps, really sort of condensing thinking small and just like, um, not only getting support like having support uh, from you guys is very helpful but like realizing I can I can stay curious and support friends who are also doing work and that's been sort of like 
I've always, I, I have done that, but I always feel like sometimes it's just like, well, that's not my job and it's not my job, but I really can do more for myself and for them by supporting them and, and my friends and, and you guys in different ways. And it's, it'll be healthy for me to look at that as like, well, they're doing something I'm not, well, let me go see what they're doing. They're doing something I also do. Let me see how they do it rather than like, well, they're doing something, but I know what that is. So I don't need to be <laughs> interested. Um, and, and, and it's not, I think it sounds, um, it's just more like I, I need to get out there. I feel like being curious and being supportive and, and finding those moments to like make things a little bit uh, smaller chunks is, is sort of my takeaway from this. And I'll toss it back to you as old. Uh, I think, awesome. Right? And I, I want to say anytime you're going to see a show or experimental theater, if you want a tag along, I am right there. I would love to do more of that and, and get more sort of just more exposure about what are the what are the cool things going on in this city? We li- we're lucky we live in in one of the most creative places on the planet. So the more I can do that, the more I can be a support, but also be just sometimes an audience member, just sometimes soaking it in is a really great thing. So let me know. I'm always up for going and seeing stuff uh, and experiencing it. Yeah, 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 for sure. So I guess for me, there are a couple of things that I've learned. One, if you've got work to do, put your butt in your seat and get the work done. That's one of the things that, I, that you know, I I have a tendency to go, oh, I have this to do and that to do and this to do and that to do. Blah, 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 blah. And I love checking things off my on my to-do list, that's for sure. But I, how do I put this? If I work at home, for example, I will notice the fact that the dishes are in the sink. I will notice the fact that I have not yet scooped the kitty litter. I will know. And so I will start going, well, I really should do this and should do that. So one of the things I've learned is I have to go outside to write. I have to go outside to create. I cannot just do it in my office because it's too easy to get distracted. And I need to put my little Brain FM app on. I need to get myself to the library or to the cafe or to wherever. And as the weather gets nicer to the park and and do the work where it's appropriate for me to do the work rather than to force myself to do work where it's not working. So part of this is work with what works for you and don't try to force it. So if I have to make changes to how I work, then I will. Uh, the the other part of it, I think, is is that I've learned through you all that there are people like I have, how do I put this? I am never short of ideas. I, my ideas come at me fast and furious. I feel like Kevin Kelly who says he's got, you know, millions of ideas at any one time. And he, he gives away all of his ideas freely because he's like, I'll never have time to do all of these. But if you love this idea and you want to do it, that would be great. If that idea exists in the world someday, I will feel so happy because I had the idea, but it just was never going to get to it. So I'm one of those people where ideas come at me fast and furious all the time. Like, hey, I know what let's do. Let's go through the entire artist's way and 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 mm-hmm. podcast it live. Why not? And I'm so the big thing is, is that I put it out there and I wasn't sure if anybody was going to say yes. And and then you three said yes. And. It, it, it was sort of a bomb to me because so much of what I've had to do, so much of what I've done has been on my own, right? I, a lot of it has been me starting it, sure, but me remaining the leader has been a, sort of a primary thing. Like, I am the leader. I, I, I am the person who pushes it. I am the person who envisions it. I am the person who gets it done. I am the person who's responsible. And frankly, you all, like your willingness to, to host sometimes makes me go, I don't always have to be the leader. Wow. And that's a big, huge thing that I've learned because most of the time I'm the leader and I don't always, it's not always appropriate for me to be the leader. And I don't always want to be, I don't always have the capacity to be the leader. So I am so grateful to all three of you that, that you are real teammates in this and the fact that that kind of gives me it's it, it 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 was a bomb in some way that's the best way i can say it it was a bomb to me that i didn't know i needed to find out that i don't always have to lead so i i'm super grateful to all of you for that and learning that was really wonderful for me so thank you all that's a cool discovery thank you for uh, you know starting it and having us and it does feel like a team effort for sure yeah uh, yeah, it does. It does. Ah. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, enough navel gazing, Isolde. Let's move on to the next question. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about the challenges. There have been challenges for all of us during this process, but I'm wondering if you if you know what has been your biggest challenge. What are your thoughts on that? Megan, would you like to go first or do you want me to go first? Because I have a big challenge. <laughs> sure, I, I can talk about the challenges. Awesome. I think for, for me, it's definitely been the process of unwinding a lot of the expectations I had for myself before we started the process. I think Alan mentioned a few episodes ago, having like this really in, intense desire to see the transformation. And I think coming to terms with like what, what that transformation would, would look like and taking a little bit of that pressure off myself has actually allowed me to accept the transformation that I think is sort of starting to happen for, for me. But I really had to let go of that previous expectation and also a lot of the really rigid expectation I had of myself to, you know, even even prepare a certain amount for each episode. Like at the beginning, I think I was going way over, overboard as I tend to do. It's just like way over preparing, like really thinking so much about each individual point that I was losing a little bit of the, the bigger picture and the bigger transformation that was possible for me. Mm. And yeah, I think that that's really been the biggest issue that I've that I've dealt with throughout dealing with those expectations and navigating what what the new expectations should be in the context of the process. That's fascinating. And I love I love that that notion of like, this is what I think it should be versus this is what it's turned into. And I have a, a follow up question. Are you OK with it? How OK are you with the two being different? I am okay with that. I think for me, I mean, a lot of what my expectations going in were not realistic for, for one thing. And part of going through this, this process in such an in-depth way over such a long period of time is that it's allowed me time to process all of that and figure out what, what do I actually need to learn? What really is standing in my way? And as throughout these weeks of the artist way, you kind of, you sort of come to your blocks in sequence almost. It's really a lot to it's not that I was unaware before that I that I had some of these issues, but I I never really had the opportunity before to deal with them in sequence like that, mm. with kind of an acceptance of them at the same time. It was it was sort of like I'd suddenly get to a point where oh I'm blocked, and then I'd I'd be really angry at myself because I I I have this issue. How do I get past it? Clearly, I just need to, you know, take the proverbial sledgehammer out and just find the way the way past it. But a lot of times that was not the right approach. And so I would, mm. I might make it through that one particular block, but then, you know, usually I would end up blocking myself in another way. So I feel like the way Julia Cameron organizes this process, it really, there really is a kind of um, natural cadence to it that, that if you're willing to engage with it can really help you move through these different blocks that you might have in a sequence that sort of allows you to at least, if not, you know, permanently overcome them, at least have more um, visibility over them in the future so that you can at least see, yes, yeah, I have this issue and this is how I might deal with it going mm. forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, sorry. <coughs> Coughing. Oh. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, somebody hasn't gone yet, but I don't remember who. Who has not gone yet? Um, I'll go next. Yeah. That's all right. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I'll go next just because my answer is very similar to Megan and uh, things that Alan has mentioned in the past. So for me, I think the biggest challenge was not the morning pages, which some might believe, but it was just trying to be more patient with myself and, and this process. And it's not that I was expecting this nascent sort of trajectory but I was waiting for this transformative experience to happen, like Megan was saying. And I think that's made it difficult in hindsight because I shouldn't have thought about it really so much. I should just have let it happen naturally. And again, in hindsight, I, I do see that happening. Um, but yeah, that's how I feel about that. How about you, Alan? That's awesome. I'm listening to you guys be like, I shouldn't have these expectations. 
And as old as I get, this started off with like, I was waiting for my, my breakthrough. When is it going to come? And then she got it. So it's like, uh, you know, it's not, I think it's like part of the promise of this process is that we'll have some sort of uh, breakthrough. And, and, but again, it's like, you, I think if you demand it or something, it's, you're going to be focused on the wrong thing. And you won't even know that you're changing. Um, but I think my biggest challenge for this podcast was kind of like, I think it was sort of twofold. I think letting go of fear and trusting the process. And I, I think I had it of my fear is just like, of, you know, a lot of it's being out, being out here, talking, being vulnerable and being exposed and thinking about um, being judged by people from my past or them saying stuff. And it's one of these lessons I have to learn over and over again. It's like not about the people <laughs> who are against you, but the people who show up and the people who are there for you and, and, and being grateful for, for those people. And, uh, you know, or just like being grateful for the support that you have. And I'm, you know, you guys see me gush about you guys. I'm super just grateful to have found you guys. And if no one was listening to this, this would still be, uh, you know, very productive and fun for, for me. And I, you know, I assume you guys too, just to, to be here and have this moment. And um, essentially, um, you know, with the listeners and there, we, we're still, we still exist. We're still falling in the forest, I guess, as they, as they say. And then I guess the trust issue is just, um, you know, trusting that I was going to be able to do it, to meet the demands of it. And, you know, and trusting that when I didn't meet every demand that it would be okay and um, feeling that. But I feel like those are, those are places where I just sort of had a lot of uh, doubts and, and concerns and, um, you know, trying to not judge myself too harshly for mm. when I sound a little bit out of it or sound like <laughs> a little like meandery or whatever. I'm like, ah, you know, I'm, I'm still making good decent points here and there so don't beat myself over about the other parts uh, that's that's my my take on it so i think we're back to you as olda did you uh, oh did you talk about your biggest I, challenge yet i didn't no. but uh but yeah Great. i i first of all i thank you all for for sharing those because they're so uh your your willingness all three of you to be so vulnerable during this process amazes me and so so because remember i mean the whole point of starting this was not only for us to go through the process but to hopefully encourage other people to rediscover their own inner creative too and and mm. I, i'm willing to bet you that everything we just talked about as a challenge has been faced by just about everybody who's gone through the process, you know, so at least one of those has been faced. And so, so having, having someone else say, yeah, sometimes I, I do feel X, whatever the X is and, and going, yeah, I feel that way too, is, is a real sense of recognition. And it's also a sense of validation that none of us are in this alone. As far as the challenge for me, uh, it's kind of a combination of all three of yours. <laughs> so, so yeah, I have that same, that same issue of, I tend to be very goal oriented. And one of my life lessons is to be more process oriented. And I've done a lot of research on it, a lot of meditation on it to, to become more in the process rather than, and, and I don't like product or profit cause that's not it. It's more like, I love checking something off on my to-do list. I love that instead of being very into where I am in the moment, I tend to go, okay, I want to, I'm going to get 20 feet ahead and that's where I'm going to be. And that's when I'll be able to rest. But then I get to the 20 feet ahead and I go, oh, I'm here. Great. Moving on to the next thing. So, so part of it has been that part of it has been sort of remembering that I, I, I can have patience, even though I was kind of impatiently waiting for the big, when is the big inspiration going to come? And, and that happened this week, which I'm very happy about. But I also have to say, like, Alan, what you were saying about people who uh, aren't with you on the journey or people who maybe from your past who have uh, less than stellar things to, to think or to say, I, I will say this. RuPaul says it best um, when <laughs> she says, what people say about me behind my back is none of my business. None of my business. And I just, first time I, when I read that in, in, in the book, uh, I just, it blew me away because it's so true. Like if somebody, if the best somebody else can do is to denigrate someone else, 
I'm not sure I have a lot of patience for that person. You know, I'm, I, I try to be patient with people, but if all you can do and the best you can do is to crap all over someone else, eh, maybe you're not the person I want in my life. So, so that's sort of my thought on that. Um, but yeah, so the challenge has been sort of a combination of all three of what you all said. Let's move on, if that's okay. How has the time allocation been for you? Have you noticed that it was a lot to do? Have you noticed that it was pretty easy to get done all the different tasks and, and doing your morning pages and your artist date? What was it like for you? Alan, would you start on this one? Yeah, time allocation, terrible. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's definitely definitely feels like a lot. And, uh, you know, I'm still in sort of, uh, I'm still fighting pandemic brain and not understanding how time works anymore and uh, getting older and just feeling like everything moves faster and then suddenly slower. So how was it for me? Uh, terrible. But um, there is a lot to do. And then I, but I also feel like, mm, you know, it's like, it's not going away and I can still do those things. And I think the first time I did this by myself, when I was all alone, I was like, well, I'm not doing every, every task. And I don't even think I processed the fact that she says you don't have to do every task. It was just mm. important for me. I'm just by myself. I'm doing this. And I was doing the morning pages and I wanted to do it. And I fell behind on the task and I let myself sort of uh, get stuck in that journey because I wasn't doing it. And this, this is a process where, because we're accountable to each other and we check in, it's sort of like a little more okay in a way that I'm not doing everything because I see like you guys have your moments and here and there and that stuff still exists. I can always go explore that stuff some more. And some of what I'm waiting for is like time to be like, Oh, let me just refocus on some of this. And like uh, I did a job at the Javits center recently and uh, just picked up some uh, of their magazines for like as a fashion thing and I was, I was like oh let me just grab these magazines that are here you know there's like the end of the we were doing breakdown and um, so I brought those home and then the other day I just sort of started ripping things out that were like uh, exciting to me so I'm still like working on a project from I think three or three weeks ago to sort of like um, build that for myself but I know that that's out there and that it has been helpful for other people so then I feel it's kind of like okay that some of these things if i haven't i don't do them i can always go invest in them when i have a little more time but to keep moving and keep uh keep driving through is is sort of the game here and it's much more helpful than just like stopping obviously awesome <laughs> um megan how is the time allocation for you it's continued to be difficult if only because i think at the beginning i maybe gave myself too much time to work on the projects, mm. especially moving through all of the tasks and stuff. And as, as we've gone through each successive week, I think every time I think I've, I've, I kind of have it down where, oh, I have an idea of how long it's gonna take me to get through the task, especially. That, that's really the most time consuming piece for me, giving myself enough time to not only do the tasks, but you know reflect on them and make sure that I'm getting everything out of the tasks that you know I think that you're supposed to get out of them like like this week the chapter itself was short but the tasks were um more more time consuming than i was expecting which i guess we can talk more about in the in the next episode but there's been a few weeks like that where i sort of had an idea of how much time it was going to take and then it ended up being this really heavy week for me probably just because we were hitting up against you know one of my particular issues or whatever that i needed to spend more time working through but i think doing this kind of really intense emotional work every week. It really does take not just for me, at least the, the time it takes to read the chapter and do the tasks. I really also need some time to just, just sit with it, sit with the reflections, maybe spend a little bit more time on morning pages in a particular week to sort of write it, write it through and, and move past it. Um, yeah. How about you, Sergio? Yeah. If I can just jump in there, Sergio, if you don't mind, but um, oh, of course. No, it just reminds me because I think she says somewhere in the book, like, oh, you can just take an hour every week to do these things. But <laughs> yeah, some of the yeah. tasks are like, go for a walk for 20 minutes. And then you're like, and then others, other, they're like labor intensive and <laughs> like, not like, not like heavy labor, but you have to actually physically do stuff. And it's not just like writing answers in a, in a, in a journal or wherever you write them. Uh, and that's a, a different, different story, but uh, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, Sergio. No, no, that's fine. No, no interruptions. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's, it's cool that we've all learned to just uh, accommodate this course uh, so that it works for us, but also still actually tackle the things that we should be tackling. For me, as far as the time put into it, it did seem initially more daunting. Like this was going to be a really big undertaking to stick it through for three months. Um, to be honest, with that being said, I feel like I'm in a space in life where um, I'm feeling uncomfortable with the time that I'm putting into or, or spending rather uh, with this course. And uh, morning pages are tough, but artist space and a lot of the tasks have been really enjoyable. How do you feel about this, Isolde? Uh, probably a little different than all of you. I am a, as, as I've said before, keep the best, lose the rest kind of person. So, so I have done the tasks that I felt would be helpful and the tasks like go cut up a bunch of magazines. Yeah, I didn't do them. But, and part of it is because mm -hmm. I went through it before. Right. I, I, I did that. I, I, I did everything religiously the first time I went through it. And the second time I went through it, I kind of went, yeah, I don't need to do all of this. I remember this. I, I've done it before. It hasn't changed a lot. I can move on. But I also am very I'm very interested in taking care of myself on some levels and totally not interested in taking care of myself on others because I will run myself ragged and then wonder why the heck I'm so exhausted. So. What I've been trying to do this whole time with the allocation is I dedicate a little time and if I feel like I'm getting tired or if I feel like I'm not making anything happen for myself, I'll just stop. So so I did that. But I do want to say, Alan, what she says is actually not an hour a week. She says an hour a day. So, <laughs> oh, well, that's my problem. <laughs> so, oh, so, so that's, that's, it's like that's seven hours. <laughs> yeah. So she said that she, it's seven hours, it's roughly seven hours a, a week that she's asking you to put in. Uh, and, and it's, a, and it's a lot of time, right? We're all busy, even though probably if I'd have had the inspiration for this earlier in the pandemic, I would not have known you all to ask you to be part of this. So, so this came when it did, but where everybody's coming out of the pandemic, we're sort of moving towards doing and being out and about. And it's harder to do some of that introspection that you might need to do and some of the, some of the actual tasks that she sets out for you. But some of this is evergreen also, right? So Megan is saying these are things that she should work on, for example. These are heavy emotional issues. Well, those heavy emotional issues for anybody, they don't go away, right? In that they're, if the, if you don't work on them this week during the Artist Way when it's talking about recovering a sense of self-protection, well, then you might work on them in July when something happens that, that sparks it for you and then you work on it then, right? Being aware that these are things, that these are issues that you might wanna work through is I think ultimately what the book is trying to do. It, you're not, the transformation doesn't happen from zero to, to 60 in these 12 weeks. It happens over your life as a person, your life as an artist, because some of these are life lessons we're learning. So so for me, the time allocation is, oh, I didn't get to it. I'll get to it someday. And if I don't, that's okay too. So that's my thought on it. All righty, so let's, let's look at, uh, let's look at what, and and I don't know if this is something we've already answered. What do you think you're getting out of this process? Is that a question that you feel you've already answered as part of this, or do you feel like you have something new to say? Anybody? Well, I would just say in response to your uh, what you were just saying, like these tools. Um, what she's giving us is a is a bunch of tools, right? Like it's like they're just like we're learning a bunch of skills. She's if we're not fully doing them or fully engaging with them now, we know that they exist and we can go back to them and so it's interesting that you mentioned that like this is something that's for our whole life it's not like we just do this 12-week course and then like ta-da exactly you're a fabulous artist you still have to like in in uh in invoke these tools that we're learning now and to continue to work with them and develop them and like anything else it's a practice i guess and and that's so that's that's how I answer that. Ab absolutely. And you know, it's interesting. Like my first book, Life Elements, it's it's a book on the characteristics of, of the elements, right? The sort of Ayurvedic or Chinese medicine or whatever. 
characteristics. So air tends to be in their head, heart, uh, water tends to be very emotional oriented, fire tends to be very active and earth tends to be very stable. And you, you sort of balance all of them so that you're not all one or have an imbalance in one or whatever, but it's a, it's a lifelong process. The, the book is evergreen, right? That's the whole point of it is that the missions and meditations in the book are designed to help you work on the things you need to work on when you need to work on them. And it calls you to build the self-awareness to know that there's something out of whack that you need to look at and perhaps work on. And I think the same thing goes with this book. You now, like you said, Alan, have tools that you can work with. And if if something works for you, then you'll use it again. And if it doesn't, then it's okay to let it lie until maybe the day comes when you do need it. Or maybe you never do. And that's okay, too. So your point is well taken. Sergio or Megan, do you have thoughts on this? On um, on what, what you're getting, what you think you're getting out of the process. Oh, okay, yeah, I think I'm getting uh, a lot out of the process. I think I'm learning more about myself and my fears and what blocks me as an artist, um, and also about approach. I think I'm learning a lot about how I should approach things for myself and for my art and. I can't emphasize this next part enough. Since I'm doing this with you all, I think one of the biggest things that I'm getting out of this, or no, I know what I'm getting really good friends out of this process. Yay. Oh, yay. Yes, you are. We love you, Sergio. Likewise, the little thumb yang. And speaking of, Megan, how do you feel about this? What are you getting out of this process? I definitely think the biggest thing I'm getting out of the process and friendship, definitely, that's really important. And just that creative support from other artists, which really does help me stay on task and stay, stay focused. And also just visibility over the big picture issues I have. I think, you know, I may need to go through this process more than once. It's it, like Isolde said, it's really a lifelong thing confronting these issues and finding ways to reach your creative goals despite whatever individual issues that you have. But I do feel like it's giving me a toolkit to kind of go back to when, I, when I'm hitting a particular block. And also just visibility over when I'm hitting something that, that feels like a block instead of catastrophizing like, like sometimes I do or feeling or, or deciding that it must be the fault of the project and, or, or something fundamentally wrong with me it's it's giving me more perspective I think a broader perspective where I can look at this in the context of oh this is you know something I've come up against before it's this particular kind of block and this is how I'm going to this is the work I'm going to do to get past it so that's that's huge for me that is awesome yeah. I love that and and it's it's so wonderful to hear sort of the depths to which we're all getting something out of the process. Uh, for me, la la la, <laughs> I, I'm getting a lot out of the process. Uh, one of the things that I've always struggled with, and a lot of it is because of my weird childhood, blah, 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 I've talked about it ad nauseum, so I don't need to talk about it anymore. But a lot of it was that I was a helper, that my role was always to be the peacemaker, to be the person who had the answers, to be the person who supported and helped other people get what they need in the moment. And that meant that creativity was in secret, right? I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't out there with my creativity. And, uh, and when I started doing creative things like joining choirs and starting to do musical theater for a long time, I didn't tell my family because telling my family was unsafe. So one of the things that I've always struggled with is to remind myself I am an artist and I've done it. Uh, I believe everything comes around in a spiral, right? It's never I've dealt with the issue and I'll never have the issue again. That's just not true. I think we keep coming around to issues that form us in some ways all our lives. And I think for me, coming up against that, are you fundamentally an artist? Are you a creative? Is gonna keep happening because for a long time I was told that, that that my role was very specific and it was not a creative one. So so coming around to that and kind of dealing with it again in this process has been eye-opening and revolutionary because on an even deeper level, 
I accept that I am an artist and I and I sort of shout it from rooftops. That's one of the reasons I'm doing my my art piece a day thing is to go, yes, I'm creative every day. Even if it's a silly little drawing or whatever, I don't care. It's me being creative. It's me staking that claim. So that's one of the things that I'm getting out of this process again. One of the other things, and this is weird, it's teaching me about other people in a way that I actually hadn't thought about before, and that is realizing when naysayers or doubting Thomases are actually blocked creatives. Like that was a real revelation this time. I had a huge revelation. I actually did an entire podcast episode about it, but I decided not to talk about it too, too much uh, because it would have been too close to naming names, but I kind of had to make that decision that uh, that something that happened, the reason it happened was because the person who was saying what they were saying was because they were blocked creative and it had zero to do with me. So finding that through the process, realizing when when some people are, are poo-pooing what you're trying to achieve or telling you it's never going to work, that so often it has nothing to do with what you're trying to achieve. It has a lot to do, mostly to do with them fearing that they would have really liked to have done that, but are too afraid to begin. So that was really interesting to me to really consciously pinpoint that instead of just being sort of resentful that this person shit all over my up, oh, got to put the explicit thing that this person shit all over my idea had the fact that they did that had nothing to do with me. It had to do more with the fact that they themselves are block creative. So that was really interesting and powerful. And then the last thing is the process right now is giving me clarity. One of the things that happens to me is that I just have so many interests and I am excited about everything. Everything fills me with a sense of wonder. It's the weirdest thing. I'm like, ah, where does tape come from? And I go down the rabbit hole of where <laughs> tapes comes from. And so so part of this for me is is really realizing that I have certain paths I want to follow and finally consciously, not subconsciously, because subconsciously I think I've always known, but consciously being able to articulate that to myself through like creative earthlings and really going this, this is my focus, this is my dream. Getting that clarity is big for me because I'm too easily swayed in the things that I'm curious about and will sometimes uh, sort of run aground on a completely different shore than the one I really wanted to focus on. So I'm really grateful for that. All righty. Uh, let us move on, if that's okay. Uh, unless anybody has anything else they want to say about this question. I just like that you emphasize clarity, gaining this sense of clarity. I think that's definitely something that I've gained through this process as well. And I think, yeah, clarity and this sense of awareness, uh, definitely. I love that you emphasize that. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. It's a, I'll, I'll just jump in and say it's like cool that you're sort of seeing – but by seeing these people as blocked artists rather than aggressors, you can have compassion both for the blocked artists and for yourself because mm -hmm. you realize it's not about you and and that's mm -hmm. really kind of about them and poor poor them. <laughs> and, and hopefully and you, they figure it out, you know. Right, and even if they don't figure it out, I mean, one of the things that can happen it's not there. Your problem. No, it's it, it, no, it's not. But at the same time, like. Here, here, I don't know if I'm going to be able to be articulate about this, but but I can I can sort of extend myself with a lot more compassion and kindness to someone who I go, wow, they're a blocked artist, and that's the best they can do right now, rather than like, oh, that jackhole, I can't believe that they said that. So, yeah. so being able to extend yourself in that way and maybe even help them is it's freeing for me, even if I choose not, like even if you choose not, and this is something so important even if you choose not to help the person who was just a jackhole to you that does not make you a bad person right sometimes they have to go through their process and you have to go through your process and the two won't necessarily align or or intersect but knowing for yourself that they might be a block creative or a blocked artist and that's why they're being jackholey to you is really important because that frees you from being entangled with their mess and that elevates all of us. The less, the fewer entanglements we have, the less we're entangled with other people, the better we are going to be able to serve our highest good and our highest purpose. And I think that's fabulous. So that's my thought on that. All righty, uh, let us move on. What has been the biggest success in this process for you? Any thoughts on that? Megan, would you like to go first on this one? 
Yes, for me, the biggest success has definitely been my ability to kind of look at all of my creative projects as an ongoing process. I think before, one reason why I had difficulty finishing things was because I would get to a certain point and I would think, well, this is difficult. Clearly, it's just it's just garbage and I should start over. And what the artist way is sort of helping me I think the process I'm learning through the artist's way is that a lot of times that's just fear, anxiety, or just elevated expectations. And that by letting the project breathe, it's okay to do that and to, and to come to your own process in more of a measured way. And to me, that's that's a huge revelation. I mean, it's been revelatory in terms of, in terms of helping me actually finish things. I mean, I've gotten further in my poetry now and, and further even in my novel than really I've, I've ever gotten before. I'm not quite where I want to be yet, but I'm closer than I've ever been. And to me, that's, that's a tremendous success. And I think wherever I go in the future, I will definitely owe it to this process in a lot of ways. How, how about you, Sergio? I think that's a big win as well, Megan, first of all. And um, for me, I think um, as far as the successes, that was the question, right? Yeah. I think for me, it's all the growth that I've experienced, all the eternal growth, and internal, excuse me, growth that I've, I've experienced from um, this sometimes edifying kind of course, and just a few projects and ideas that, that have spawned during this process. I think the confidence and reassurance that's building with the fact that I'm sticking through something like this, like this, a process like this, you know, and not quitting, I think that's going to add to my confidence and, and just be reassuring to look back on. And, you know, I did that, so I can do these other things too. And also, again, the great friends I've made. How are you feeling now? <laughs> Yeah, I'm feeling good. This, I think that's a cool. Um, Sergio, it's nice to like hear you sort of process this stuff. Like this feeling of like, I totally identify with that feeling of like <laughs> wanting to bail or like feeling like, am I going to be able to do this? So that was a big concern signing up for that. And so uh, definitely just a big success being here. And uh, so congratulations to, for doing that. Um, and I guess for me, you know, I, I thought about this and you guys are saying great things. And my, I think part of it is me sort of accepting myself as a writer a little bit more and letting that exist as part of who I am. Cause I think it's always been, always thought of myself more of an actor and, uh, but I've always sort of known that I was a writer. So <laughs> it's been a weird uh, struggle internally, but now I'm sort of accepting that both can be true and I should give of uh, water and seed to both uh, energies and let them, let them blossom together. Uh, and so more concretely, I guess my feeling is um, I had a really big scene that I wrote in the, in the pilot that I'm working on. And that was to me, just getting all that down on paper, uh, my vision and sort of as complicated as it felt to write, I, I was able to do it one step at a time. Uh, so that was really exciting. And then another another big writing success is, and I don't know why I didn't mention this earlier, but I wrote, you know, a clown piece inspired by the four of us <laughs> called The Morning Pages, a clown Yay. show. And yes. it's the first time I've worked at making a clown piece from the pen. Rather, you know, I, I watched this guy do it in Colorado once. He would come, come in with everything written for his character. We were just doing solo stuff, and I was just an improviser clown who would like just would show up and like whatever comes out of my mouth is hopefully magic. And uh, <laughs> so to write stuff down and then to, like to write sort of like physical beats of a comedy of a clown piece was is so exciting for me and fun. And then just to hear you guys <laughs> respond and and uh, the love of received from you felt really like okay I'm on the right course and so this is such a fun thing and I'm excited to see where that project goes but just to have it 
um, come along as far as it has is out of nowhere, out of the morning pages, actually, Sergio, like um, I'm referencing you talking about your story coming out of that. But um, that was definitely something I wrote, like definitely a few, like maybe a page of it in my morning pages. And then I was like, oh, got to convert that. Um, so that to me, those those are my big successes here. And of course, just like accepting myself as a writer and and moving through that. Isolda, what has been your biggest success? Oh, ah, there have been so many. So f- the yeah. biggest one, honestly, is this wonderful I don't even know how to call it. Team is the best word that I can come up with. <laughs> All of you um, being feeling like we have, because uh, I don't want to say solidified because I think it, it's always it's ever changing. But we, I feel like we, we are a cohort now. We are, you know, we're so that's that's probably the biggest uh, that I feel like. Wow, this is it's so cool to have people. Uh, you can really work with and and support and who you also know will support you in your weird, wacky and wonderful ideas. So I think that's that's probably the biggest. But the 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 sort of the more tangible, I would say, successes are finally, finally, finally figuring out what to do with Overheard and turning it into a play and having the yeah. gonads to write a play because I've been afraid of writing a play my whole life, even though I've written screenplays. I don't know why writing a play uh, has been such a such so daunting and starting real real work on soul song and not just talking about writing soul song uh for the last 20 years and uh really finalizing my notion about what's going to happen with die by the sword which is the tarot card murders book and that like making those realizations taking those actions getting so much progress on getting the book done the book cover done the the tarot class that i've been working on for easily four years getting that done really working on it and last but not least the other sort of big success has been reminding myself that it's okay to invest in myself so i'm flying without a net right now Uh, i'm taking real serious time to create and that investment is the right thing and believing that with every fiber of my being is a huge success for me because I tend to always want to serve others first and I'm putting myself first right now and that is scary for me because it's way out of my comfort zone to put myself first and I'm doing it and that is I cannot overstate what a huge deal that is for me so yay for all of us okay Uh, follow the fear yeah, exactly. It will lead you to strange and unusual places. All right, cool. Uh, so I, I actually just answered this next question for myself, but for all of you, how have you changed as a person and or as an artist? Alan, would you like to take this one first? Sure. I mean, uh, I think it's more simply, I feel a little more open. I feel um, more a little more confident than I maybe I started off as. Uh, doing this and I feel excited excited to be doing this and as an artist I feel like that excitement is driving me now a little bit more and I'm I'm, I just yeah I have excitement being here with you guys is like feeling like I have a a support group like a a support group for being an artist and uh but no like really having that so community again um and it's been really nice so I'll say that. And uh, Sergio, how have you changed as a person, as an artist, or and as an artist, I should say? I've changed as a person because I've gotten three new amazing friends to add to my life. <laughs> oh, how much Obsessed. they're adding to my life. <laughs> exactly. I really appreciate you all more than you know. And it's really nice to hear that we all feel the same way. Um, but I think for me, the realization that my procrastination comes from fear, uh, fear of failure, and that I've been my probably the biggest crazy maker of my life or blocker has been myself. Um, I think with that knowledge, that's quite revelatory and that I've changed and uh, hopefully will continue to change. Megan, how about you? I've definitely changed in that I see now more where I need to be a little bit kinder to myself throughout the process, which 
for me, I think is key to reaching the really big goals I ultimately want to get to. It really was not working before when I was just, you know, constantly in this grind of, um, in some ways, just like self-punishing negativity, you know, like the artist way has really kind of helped me move past that place. And that's changed me not only as an artist in the sense that it's helping me make more progress on my projects, but also as a person, because I think I am, I'm a happier person when I'm not always in that place or when I can see myself starting to slide into that place that I have some, yeah, again, some visibility over that. And then I can take some other action. You know, I can think, okay, that's where my mind wants to go, but I can make a different choice now and do something else. And that feels better. So that, to me, that, that's, that's a really significant change. Back to you, Isolde. Uh, thank you all. This, what great, what great changes. This is great. Uh, how have I changed this person? I think, I think some of this is a kindness thing for me is being more kind to myself, being more patient with myself. I tend to be a, why haven't I gotten there per yet person? Uh, I teach other people how to be patient, but I often don't have patience for myself and with myself. Uh, you you laugh because you know it's true. Uh, uh, we t we teach what we uh, most need to learn. Sure, yeah. yeah, for sure. And and so so with myself, I'm always impatient with my energy levels. I'm always impatient with uh, what I could have or should have. I hate the word should, but I do it to myself too. What I should have been able to get done. And so, so sort of that notion of like, yeah, I, I, am, I am learning slowly but surely to do what I can when I can, instead of beating up myself, beating myself up for what I haven't done. So, and also kind of like, I had this thing happen the other day, this, and I think I mentioned, I don't remember if I mentioned it to you all yet, or if you just saw it, or if we talked about it last week's show, I don't remember, but I had this artist contact me and go, I have got to talk to you about your technique. It sucks on, on my creative, my creative art pieces a, a day, the thing that I'm doing in 10 minutes, right? Please remember I'm taking 10 minutes to do these. It's not like a, an hour and a half or four hours. It's a few minutes every day. And and he's like, I, I cannot be silent any longer. Your stuff is basically sucky and I need to say all of the different ways that it's sucky. And I kind of went, you know, I'm going to invite you to not follow me. If this is bothering you so much, please just off you go. Right. Whereas before I what was that? Uh, Screw like, that guy. That oh, yeah. I mean, but 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 the thing is, for me, I, I kind of my immediate reaction would normally be, oh, yeah, well, screw you. And then I kind of went, ah, this is one of those times where I went, oh, blocked creative. Even though he's a professional artist, obviously blocked creative. Like if you feel the need to go onto someone's page and, and DM that person and go, you suck. I'm like, that's not about me. And I was able to kind of go, you know what? Off you go. Go, you know, go in peace. Do your thing. I don't need to listen to it. And so... So that was a real, that was part of that recognizing a block creative when someone comes up to you and they're all in your business trying to tell you that what you're doing is sucky. Chances are the stuff you're doing is just fine and they're not in a good place. That's that's kind of <laughs> where I went. I'm like, this guy's not in a good place. He's probably really frustrated with his own creative output and this is his way of raging against the machine. And so I put a thing out there and this is this is one of the things that I do and I've said this with every group I've ever facilitated before you ask for feedback tell me the kind of feedback you want so that we're giving you what best serves you right and so I put it out on Facebook I was like y'all I don't need feedback on this unless you're going to tell me you what you love about it and then the more the merrier I'm not interested in critique. I have not asked for critique. This is something I'm doing, uh, posting it on Facebook every day as an accountability thing. If you want to look great, if you don't, that's cool too. But I don't honestly don't want to hear ways in which you think it, it could be improved. And knowing myself well enough, that's part of what's changed about me is I know myself so much better now even just these last 10 weeks or whatever to go, yeah, this is what I need. And I don't have to be resentful of this, of this person who was all like, your stuff sucks. I can just go, obviously you and I are in different places. I'm in an exploratory place and you're in a block creative place and I don't need 
what you're, I, I'm not going to pick up what you're putting down. Right. So, so that changed in me recently because normally I'd be like, oh yeah, you know, put up your dukes. We're going to, we're going to fight this out and I'm a black belt. So, so I don't want to do that. I want to let him be him over there and I'll be me over here and accepting that that's part of where I am now has really changed me as a person. I hopefully it'll make me kinder because I'm always striving to be more kind, but also as an artist, it's made me go, I, it's okay for me to explore what I'm exploring. It's okay for me to, to really delve deeply into the colors and the palettes and the techniques and the thoughts and the ideas that I am trying to explore. I don't need to be on anybody else's timetable. And as an artist, that's a huge thing because I'm not, I'm not on deadline. I'm doing this for myself as to see what my vision is to see what I can create. And that's a huge change for me because so often I'm on deadline to, to satisfy something, somebody else's stuff. What was that, Alan? I didn't hear what you said. I said exactly. Like it's for you. It's like, it's for you. Yeah. And, and you know, what's really funny is that I'm having all these people going, may I make a print of that for me. I want to buy it. And I'm like, of the very one, the person was like, this sucks. I'm like, and that's the one that everyone's like, this is awesome. I want to, I want to print of this. And it's just really funny. You, there's no accounting for taste. So, so there you go. So yes, if you want to buy any of my little art prints, I'm going to print them out and, and people will be able to purchase them. But, but the point is that it's like, for me, it's for me, I'm not doing this for anyone else. But the question somebody raised the question, then why are you posting them? And I'm like, it's accountability. I want to know that there's somewhere and I treat Facebook like my journal. So there's somewhere that I can put up my stuff and just go, I did this today. I did this today. I did this today. Not, you know, tell me that, tell me that you love it or tell me that you hate it or tell me what's wrong with it. Don't need that. That's not where I am. So cool. Um, anybody else have anything to say on this question? Uh, no, I just want to say that I, I've seen you all change as people and artists and it's really cool. That, and if you don't think the change is happening, it's definitely happening for you, but <clears throat> just know that I've, I've seen it in you guys and that's really cool to see. That's awesome. And you know, you it's it's hard to to see the change from inside the ship. So, uh mm -hmm. it's really nice to have somebody else reflect it for you. Cool. Uh awesome. So let let me get to the last question. When we embark when we first chatted about embarking on this process, we all had ideas about what we wanted to have happen at the end. Is it still what you want? And if not, what is it that you do want now? Uh, Sergio, would you like to go first on this one? Yeah, for me, for what I envision happening or what I wanted initially before going into this process or starting this course, um, I don't, I don't think that what I envision that is, is exactly happening how I thought, but I am excited and grateful for a lot. Uh, of what's ha of what is happening at the moment and yeah there's just a lot to be grateful for from you know obviously we spoke about this process doing this with each other and the friendship that we built from that um i'm really grateful for that i'm really grateful for the writing and the other creative projects that are spawning from this um just the other things in my life it's, it's definitely definitely given me a sense of awareness and appreciation for the other things like the, ad the advocacy that I do, the YouTube channel, and just all the other things in between. So I feel like things aren't happening exactly how I envisioned them, but I, I do feel they are um, happening. I do feel that I, I'm getting to that point, or hopefully making more progress. And that's, that's all I can ask for, right? We're all works in progress, right? Absolutely. For sure. So yeah, I'm just the whip, whipping it up over here. That's an acronym <laughs> for work in progress. And Alan, I must ask you how you feel about this. Yeah, cool. So I, I, I'm, I, mine's pretty simple. I think like when I first started this process, you know, I wanted to reclaim myself as an artist, and uh, I think I wanted to. My one of my goals was to finish this pilot um, and have the script and write the script. And uh, now I just want more. Like I want to produce it. I want to. I want to see it develop. I want. I have a, 
a bigger vision for where my life can go. And, re and as a result uh, of doing this work and then working on the pilot and, and making things happen. And now I just sort of have a greater vision. Like I want, I just want more. Awesome. Um, <laughs> and I think that's, that's where I'm at. Isolde, why don't you uh, want to light, enlighten us on your process here where you oh. thought you were, what you're going for and where, what you want now? Uh, well, I had a twofold process, uh, a twofold idea, I mean. One uh, was for myself, but the other was for the podcast, right? I wanted to, one of my prime directives is to help other people be creative and through their creativity, change the world for the better. That's like, boom, if, if, if I were to say, what is my mission in life? That's my mission in life. So Yay. I wanted to, I know, I mean, that's, it's like, I, again, clarity, having that clarity came, that clarity came through this process. So that's really awesome. But that's why I wanted to start the podcast. I didn't have it articulated to myself, but that's why I wanted to start this process on the podcast is to reach more people who might want to, but don't have any idea how to embark on their own artistic journeys. So I wanted the podcast to be a vehicle to reach more than just me, more than even just the four of us, to reach other people who who can be creative, who are already creative, who might not know the roadmap to becoming artists or whatever, but who can then take that roadmap, become artists, discover their ingenuity, and use that creativity and ingenuity to make changes in the world for the better. Boom. So that was one of the things. And yes, it's happening. And I and I and I know it's happening. And that's fabulous and wonderful. For myself, I wanted clarity, which I'm getting with Creative Earthlings, and I'm thrilled to pieces about that. I wanted to have uh, the tarot card murders, or as it's known, the first book is known, Die by the Sword, ready and available to get going. And that to me changed, right? I wanted it to be ready to go to an editor and I have since decided to forego that process. And instead I'm going to work on it differently and the book will come out in June to be your fabulous summer read. So if you're looking for a good summer beach read, this book is gonna be great for that. Um, a little plug there. So that's Yay. part of this. Die I know. by the sword. In Die June. by the sword in June. Exactly. I wanted to Ooh. have the the uh over, I wanted to have overheard in a book form ready to go during this process. And you know what? That transformed and now it's gonna be a play and I'm working on it with the help and feedback of these three wonderful people through our writers group and sometimes our our, our fourth cohort, Lisa. So I'm I'm getting all of the things that I thought I wanted in not the way that I thought I wanted them, except for the fact that I really think this podcast is, and it's gonna live on you know, in infamy, it will live in infamy forever on, on the podcast mm -hmm. channels so that anybody coming through is going to be able to see a way, a path through with us. If you wanna come in in July and start the process, these podcast episodes are going to be there. And Alan took it upon himself, for example, to create a Spotify pay playlist that is all, it's gonna be all the episodes. So if you ever wanna go through the entire process yourself, you just go by date, find the podcast, find that Spotify, it's gonna be the links in the show notes. You're gonna be able to go through the entire 14 week process yourself start at the beginning and go through it along with us as we go through it. And that will really fulfill the goal that I had, which was to help other people be creative, so creative that they go want to go out and change the world. And that's where I am. So I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled with the process. I'm thrilled with all of you. I'm sometimes less thrilled with Julia Cameron, although I think the book is seminal and it's a great way to start this book and also Stephen Pressfield's uh, The War of Art is another book that is phenomenal for this kind of creative recovery. So these are all things that we can all be doing, I think, to really propel ourselves forward in our creative lives. And that's that. All righty. Uh, anybody have anything else that you would like to say about the process, the ideas or anything before we bid adieu? Uh, Megan answered. Oh, Megan, did you not answer? I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's totally cool. I, I, I'll just answer quickly. Um, I think I definitely had some hope when I went into this process that I would be able to find my way past my blocks. But I think I also had a limited view of how that would um, transform my life. So I think I do still want the same things in terms of realizing those creative goals, you know, finishing my novel, making page poems kind of a larger brand. But 
Um, I do have a different idea about how I'm going to get there. So yeah, that, that was all I had to say. It's totally cool. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I usually the, I'm last when I, you know, like the pity and everybody and back to you is old and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm last. So everybody must have gone. I apologize. My my, my apologies yeah. on that. Yeah, uh, that's totally um, cool. Um, Shaking it up. We're on this uh, reflective episode. I see he's just keeping things fresh. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, you know what? I, we'll do I that. was trying to set you up. I was trying to set you up so you didn't have to close out after you also spoke. So. Yeah, uh, see, and, and I'm and, and that's I I need lunch. I think that's the problem. All right. <laughs> it, now I can ask, is there anything else anybody would like to say about this process and this reflective episode? Uh, just no, really it's always been, yeah, go ahead, Sergio. Sorry. No, you know what, Alan, you take it away. So I'm pretty sure we're going to have a similar sentiment. So please, Alan. It's always fun to talk to you guys. And this has been another interesting talk and, and really enlightening. And uh, of course, thanks for inviting us to do it, Isolde. Thanks for doing it, Megan and Sergio. It's so fun to be with you guys. And thanks again, Isolde, for hosting this little break week. <laughs> Yes, I, I second all of the above. <laughs> Megan, Thanks. any any thoughts? Yeah, I just want to thank all of you guys for your your sharing, your vulnerability. You're willing to um, go through this process with with me and and yeah, form this little cohort that that we're in. I, I feel really supported by by all of you, and I and I really hope that you feel supported by me too, because I I really I really care about all of you, and I want to support you in your creative journeys. And um, yeah. yeah. I'm excited Hopefully. to see what, what comes up what comes up for us in the last couple of weeks of the artist way. Yes, likewise. Yeah, I think it's going to be really interesting to see where, you know, and maybe we'll do another little bit at the very end, a little bit of reflection on this, on, on the process and where we go. And I appreciate all your words so much. And it's true. I mean, we've developed this this bond, as far as I'm concerned, that that is something that's that we're going to carry long past doing this artist way a project together, but also I, I want to extend something to you. If you're listening, this is something that you can do too, right? You do not have to, you don't have to follow along with what we've done, but if you decide to ask a friend or two, if they want to go on it with you and go on the journey together and see the kinds of things that you come out with, chances are they're, they're going to be, some of them are going to be very similar to something that Alan, Sergio, or Megan, or I have, have said or thought. And chances are there's going to be some stuff that's very different. But if you have someone along on the journey with you, it's incredibly helpful because it just gives you a, a, a sounding board and a support. And so, so reach out, find a Facebook group that's full of writers. You can do, you don't have to do it in person. You can do it virtually like we've done and just go through it together and see what you can come up with because being creative is our birthright dog on it and I, I like i always say the very first thing you do when you're born is you breathe the second thing you do is you express yourself through crying so you make sound you get you you announce your presence with authority and that is the key is creativity is making something out of nothing and you have the opportunity to do that and if you choose to change the world for the better with your creativity so much the better until next time when we were going to come back next week and megan is going to host the chapter on recovering a sense of self-protection i on the behalf of alan and sergio and megan want to wish you a great week and a creative time and please remember everything is in the show notes if you want to support the podcast i'd love it if you'd like to buy me a cup of Cup, cup, little, little, cup of coffee. I like my latte with oat milk, just letting you know. Until next time, I remind you to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2022. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind.